Okay, so today we're going to talk about the analysis of covariance, or the ANCOVA. Again, the GLM2 means General Linear Model 2, where the ANOVA was General Linear Model 1. So we're going to see that all of these um, different ANOVA variants have different General Linear Model numbers. Sometimes that's how referred to, um, I guess, in statisticians' world, but in most of our worlds, we just call it the ANCOVA and move on. All right, so what is the ANCOVA for? Generally, we want to test differences between the means because that's what we generally do for any ANOVA. However, this is very similar to that partial correlation and the semi-partial correlation where we want to know what the external variable has or that extraneous variable has on the impact of that outcome variable. So the ANCOVA is really nothing more... Um, then correlation, the partial correlation taken to a parametric statistical analysis uh, or the inferential analysis, which is very nice. Um, so now we can actually, we can take what we knew from the correlation and actually statistically say it's significant or not. It does have an impact or it doesn't have an impact. So we're going to use this just to control for that third variable or fourth variable, depending upon how many we have. And all of those extraneous variables are otherwise known as simply covariates, hence the analysis of covariance. So that's where this all comes from. So let's go back and look at one of the examples we had previously on VICAM on sickness. Um, if you remember, our participants could either take a placebo, they could miss some doses, they could have some regular doses, and then the outcome variable was an objective measurement of their sickness or their wellness. Um, and we found out some interesting results. However, I would like to pose a question. How does fatigue or health of others factor into one's wellness? So let's say um, you had a very, very ill individual, um, did not take care of themselves, or was only getting two or three hours of sleep a night. Uh, they had a cold, they were taking Zycam, and it did not have an impact. Or let's look on the other side. You had a very, very healthy person, a strict eight hours of sleep a night, um, took the appropriate vitamins, ate properly, um, they receive a cold, they take Zycam on a regular basis. Which one of those two individuals is probably likely to get better faster? The individual that has um, had an appropriate amount of sleep and rest and is taking care of themselves. So it does have an impact on how the experiment was run regarding Zycam and sickness. And this is what we can, this is exactly what the ANCOVA was designed to do, was take into that factor and understand how that impacts our ultimate result of this test. So some of the advantages of this, we're going to be able to reduce that error variant. So the error variant was at SSR, the standard, sum of standard residuals. So we'll be able to take that and break it down and hopefully reduce the SSR and increase our SSM. Uh, so that's really the goal of the ANCOVA is to reduce that um, unexplained variance. Another advantage is we do have a little bit more control simply because we're taking those extraneous variables and we're putting them into the model. So what's that's going to do? That's going to help us remove the bias that we have. Um, and help us hopefully improve the probability of um, getting a good result from this test. We're also going to have some better insight into the effect of that predictor variable um, because we know of the experiment that we're running and the variables that we could possibly have. So when we look at the breakdown, um, this is our basic total sum of squares, model sum of squares, residual sum of squares. This here is where our covariate comes in. So this is how we end up reducing the SSR. We're going to take this SSR and break it up into two pieces. Part of it will still stay as an SSR. But part of it will go to the covariate piece. So that is um, the great benefit to the ANCOVA. Now, some of the assumptions, there's only two, thankfully, as compared to some of the other tests that we run, um, only two assumptions. First of all, that covariate must be independent from the experimental effect, and we'll give you an example of that here in a minute. And we need to have homogeneous regression slopes. Very easy to figure out whether we have that or not. Let's talk about that independent variable 
um, the independence from the experimental effect. Uh, so there's two ways to look at this. This is our basic, this top piece here is just our basic ANOVA. Let's throw in the covariate. The covariate is this purple piece here. Um, what we want is we want independence. If we want independence, we do not want, this, is, this here is not independent. It is covered by both. So that we would not be running in ANCOVA because this effect of the experimental piece, this piece right here, is actually confounded by the covariate. So that is not what we want. What we want is this piece over here where we have our residual sum of squares, but a portion of that is going to be explained by that covariate. So that's a perfect situation, only sharing variance with part of the unexplained or unsystematic variation. All right, a little bit more into what happens if you do have a shared variance. You're really reducing the experimental effect, which is not what we want. Um, so we're going to explain some of the variants that would be attributed that would be otherwise attributable to the experiment. Exactly not what we want. We we'll also have a lack of ind independence means we're going to find some false effects. And then false effects means you really can't interpret the outcome of your ANCOVA. So we really don't want that shared variance by the treatment and the unexplained variance. We want just the covariate to be within that unexplained variance alone. So here's an example of a problem. So if you want to look at anxiety and career stability, closely related. So let's say you want to compare tenured faculty and non-tenured faculty to find out what their anxiety is. Um, so you might want to say, well, we could look at career stability and hopefully we'll be able to really take a look at how anxiety impacts tenured and non-tenured faculty. Well, unfortunately, that stability is going to contain some of that variance from anxiety. Uh, because if you are tenured, your anxiety should automatically be lower than non-tenured faculty. Um, so you really can't separate the anxiety and the stability because it's always going to be shared. So what could you do to fix that problem? Well, one of the things you can do, you can randomize, randomly select people, match on the covariant, more importantly, find non-tenured faculty who are confident. So they're not going to have anxiety that's associated with stability. You know, maybe they're in their uh, last year of the tenure track process, and at that point they're going to know whether or not they're going to get tenure and so there should be some confidence there. Now you can compare those folks to tenured faculty if you really want to look at anxiety. <clears throat> and you need to make sure that your experimental groups do differ in that covariate. Um, and that's really a good way to figure out whether or not you've got some shared variance problems. All right, homogeneity of regression slopes. Essentially, we're just looking at the relationship between the outcome and the covariate. It can't differ. Easy way to find that out, just plot a scatter plot, covariate on one axis, the outcome on the other axis, and use some regression lines. So then you'll end up with a graph that looks like this. Um, this is our Zycam piece again. What we want is we want parallel lines. So it looks like we do not meet the homogeneity regression slopes because regular is not parallel to the other two. Uh, and we're going to find out uh, through statistics how we can see this as well. Uh, but it's always nice, again, to not have to run too many tests. So if you just plot a scatter plot, you're making sure that you're maintaining your power. Um, and then you can see that you do not meet this assumption, so maybe this is not the appropriate test. Maybe there's a non-parametric test that you would prefer to run. All right, so let's look at an example here. So we have means and standard deviations. We're going to look at the Zycam issue again. So we have the placebo, the missed dose, and the regular dose, except we're going to add a covariate there. Obviously, the alertness rating is the next piece. So what is the mean level of alertness across the three Zycam groups? 
So we want to be able to see whether or not our data is independent. So a good way to do that is just simply run an ANOVA on alertness as the outcome and Zychem as the dose. <clears throat> so just a basic boring univariate analysis. Um, and you get the results. So we want to see if alertness is equal across the dose. So we're going to look at just this one simple line. Is the mean similar across the three groups? So alertness is not significant. So therefore, the means are equal. They are similar across the three groups. Therefore, we have met uh, the independent assumption. All right, so let's go ahead and try to run an ANCOVA. Now what you're going to see, we've got our dependent variable, wellness rating, our fixed factor is our dose, and then our covariate goes down here, that's our alertness rating. In the ANOVA, we ran post hoc test, but it looks like the post hoc tests are disabled in the ANCOVA. So it's not designed when you have a covariate. Um, so we're going to get to a way to get around that here in a few minutes. Now when you do run the ANCOVA uh, and you do the contrast, there are several different types of contrast that you can run. Um, I've got them listed here. You can read those. You can select what you want. But basically, we have a placebo. We have a control category. So what we want to do is we want to be able to compare all of our experimental groups with the control. So that's just a simple contrast, and you put placebo as the first category. So the reference category you select is first. Now you have to click change in order for that to happen, and when you click change, you're going to see that dose, simple, and then first will appear. And that way you know you've done it correctly. All right, so if we want to still run post hoc test in ANCOVAs, um, another way we can do that is under the option variable, and we're probably going to stick just with the Bonferroni test. Right here under our confidence interval adjustments, um, and you select Bonferroni. Obviously, you're going to want to select some descriptive statistics, estimates of effect size, uh, parameter estimates are nice to know. Homogeneity tests are also nice to know. Um, all right, and that's essentially it. All right. Um, another, that's just exactly what I showed you there before. So let's look at what happened before. So we have the ANOVA. So this is what we did before, exactly the same test. We found out that Zycam had no significant effect on wellness. And the amount of variation explained by the manipulation, 16.84, and the amount explained unexplained is 94. Not good. 94 is greater than 16, so we know that we have a whole lot of unsystematic variation or unexplained variance. All right, so then this is a perfect opportunity to go ahead and add some type of a covariant to reduce, right? We want this number to decrease substantially. So let's go ahead and look at our ANCOVA results and see what happens. So we add the alertness variable. And you can look at alertness. Go across the side here. And if our alpha is 0 0.05, the covariate significantly has predicted the dependent variable. So that is good. Uh, the amount of variation accounted for in the model Again, if you remember from the previous slide, it was 16.84. It is now 31.92. So it has increased substantially. How about the amount of variation? Uh, that can be explained by dose.
that is now up to 25.18 by dose. Again, because the previous model only had dose in there, we went from 16 up to 25. Great. We also can say the amount of explained by alertness is 15.08. That number right there. And then we have our unexplained. What is our unexplained? 79, essentially 0 0.05. Remember, it was 94. So looking at the covariate, the effect of the alertness or the health of the individual on the ability to take Zycam, take a different dose, really helped the model quite substantially. Now, if you'll also look, I didn't show you before, but the total, 110.967, is exactly the same as it was with the ANOVA. That is just how it should be. So therefore, we absolutely know that the only thing that has changed in the model is the ability to understand the impact of the alertness on the test. So that's pretty great news. Um, so let's go ahead and look at further results. Let's look at our contrast. Uh, when you do the contrast, right, you've got different levels. So we are level one. That is our first level. That was our control. So that was our placebo. Level two, you have to go back to see how you coded that. We coded level two was our missed dose, and level three was our regular dose. So you kind of have to write some notes along the side as to what each one of those comparisons are. Um, so when we look at this, we see that the missed dose and the regular dose group have significantly different wellness ratings than the placebo group. Um, so that is interesting, right? Here's our here's the differences between the two groups. Um, and they are significant between the placebo. So in a NOVA, we were comparing the means to be able to interpret. Here, uh, you can't compare the means because you've got a covariate in here. So here we have to at least look at the contrast to be able to say uh, the regular dose is statistically significantly different than the placebo. The missed dose is statistically significant than the placebo. And the only way we can look at that is to say, well, that difference is 1.786, and this difference is 2.25. Um, and that's pretty much all we can say, because we have that covariate again. Now let's look at the dose of the Zycam. So here are our estimates. And you can see that the level of wellness was significantly higher in the missed dose and the regular dose groups. So here's our wellness, right? And that kind of goes back to why we have that, that difference. And that's where that difference came from, is the difference between those two means. And then we have our post hoc results. Remember, this is we kind of had to fake it. Um, so this was our 95th confidence interval differences. But it still gives us significant differences, and it still looks like a post hoc test. So we're just going to call it a post hoc test. And here we can look at our missed dose versus our regular dose. Missed versus regular were statistically similar. Um, the missed dose versus the placebo were statistically similar. The placebo versus the regular dose were statistically different. And here we can look at uh, our covariate and how we interpret the covariate um, so the B value, if the B value is positive, that means the covariate and the outcome variable has a positive relationship.
So as alertness increases, so does the person's wellness. And that's what we get right there. So that is, that's nice to know. Um, and you can look at the various different doses as well, but here we're really trying to understand the covariate. So as their alertness increases, so as they are less fatigued, we have an improvement to their wellness. It's kind of as we would expect it. So if you want to test the assumption of the homogeneity of the regression slopes, you can just rerun the ANCOVA, but use a customized model. Um, go ahead and you know move your dose and your alertness over there, but then you're going to want to hit the interaction, and that will give us the results of the homogeneity. And here's our homogeneity results. We look at dose times alertness. It is significant. So if the interaction is significant, then the assumption of the homogeneity regression slopes has been broken. But we already knew that, right? Because we drew, we had our scatter plot. And we had two lines that looked like that and one line that looked like that. Therefore, we know we do not have homogeneity results simply because of the scattered plot. So you don't have to run this test. You can just go ahead and use that answer because you know um, you pretty much have the answer without even running a test. The last piece for the ANCOVA is looking at the, the effect size. Uh, we have the partial eta squared, which is what this here is, the partial eta squared. That is how you calculate it. But the good news is, is that um, the SPSS program actually calculate, calculates this for us. Uh, but when we look at this, a way to interpret this is that we can say, well, the dose, 0.24, does have a bigger proportion of the variance that's not attributable to other variables than alertness. So there's your alertness. So dose um, does carry a bigger proportion of the variance. And then here we have our ANCOVA output, and you see the alertness, 0.16, dose, 0.242. So you don't have to manually calculate that. It calculates it right there for us. Um, now, the one thing that you might want to do is you actually might want to calculate you know, something that you can compare. We've talked about um, the effect size, the general effect size for before using the R values of the Pearson R's. Uh, so you can see that the covariate itself has a fairly significant effect. Missed dose versus placebo has a pretty significant effect, but very, very small effect versus regular versus missed dose. So here's where we end up seeing our big differences. Um, it's statistically significant and practically significant. And that pretty much does it for the